Hi guys, today we're going to look at rectangles and their properties. So the first thing is the definition of a rectangle. So a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So that means since it's a parallelogram, that means that it has all of the parallelogram properties. So the properties that say that the diagonals bisect each other, opposite sides are congruent, opposite sides are parallel, opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. We also know that it has four sides, four angles. Um, it has all of those quadrilateral properties. All of the angles add up to 360. And in addition to being a parallelogram, it has four right angles. So that property, I'm going to guess that you guys probably already know, that you have four 90-degree angles. So that's what makes a rectangle different than a parallelogram, is the fact that you're going to have these four right angles. The other property um, is that the rectangle has diagonals that are congruent to each other. So this is the second property. So we really have two new things. A rectangle is going to have four right angles as well as congruent diagonals. So I'm going to go ahead and label those right angles. And if those diagonals are congruent, that would mean this diagonal, the entire thing, is congruent to this diagonal here. I'm actually going to erase that little bracket. So that diagonal would be congruent to this diagonal. And since a rectangle is a parallelogram, that means the diagonals bisect each other from the parallelogram properties. So in a rectangle, that means that all four of these pieces must be congruent because the diagonals are bisecting each other. And if the entire diagonals are congruent, then that means the two part or the four parts have to be equal. So for example, if this entire segment is 10 and this entire segment is 10, then that means each of the parts would have to be 5 because parallelogram bisects the diagonals. Rectangle means that the original diagonals were, were congruent to start. So those are the new properties. So let's look at how those can be used to solve some algebraic type problems. So the first thing is I have a rectangle. So let's go ahead and draw a picture of a rectangle. So we have rectangle. Let me use this instead. So rectangle, A, B, C, D. So make sure when you're labeling these, you're going around in the order. And A, B is 15. B, C is 6. We want to find the length of the diagonal in simplest radical form. So since the diagonals are equal, it doesn't matter which diagonal you draw in. So if I draw this diagonal right here, um, that probably makes more sense just because of the fact that I have measurements on these two sides. If I were to draw in this other diagonal, then you would want to label um, this side over here as 15 because we know opposite sides are congruent since the rectangle is a parallelogram. So I could label this 15, I could label this 6. But if I'm looking at it the way that I have it, I'm looking at that diagonal, I see that I have a right triangle because if you remember rectangles, rectangles have four right angles, and if I'm trying to find the length of the diagonal, so let me call it x, if I have a right triangle and I'm trying to find a missing side and I know two other sides, this will allow me to use Pythagorean theorem. Now, if we knew one of the angles, we could do SOHCAHTOA to solve for the missing side, but since I have two sides here and I don't know any of the angles, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 6 squared plus 15 squared equals x squared. So remember, you have to use x as the hypotenuse. So then from here, go ahead and solve it. So 6 squared is 36. 225 equals x squared. So add those up, you get 261 equals x squared. Square root both sides. So then what we want to do is let's break this up into simplest radical form. So we know the answer is going to be x equals the positive square root of 261. Remember, you really get plus or minus here whenever you take the square root of x squared. But since this is a, a length of a diagonal, it's going to just be the positive case. And then what we're going to do is we're going to break it up. So you want to find the largest perfect square and then the non-perfect square that multiply to give me 261. So in the calculator, remember, you can look in the table. If you type in, if you go to the graph and you type in F1 equals 261 divided by X. And then if you look in the table, you'll see 
9 and 29. So 9 times 29 gives me 261, and 9 is a perfect square. So I'm going to break this up as 9 and 29. And then square root of 9 is 3, so I get 3 times the square root of 29. So that would be the length of the diagonal in simplest radical form. So then the next example, we have a rectangle again. So let's go ahead and sketch our rectangle, label it A, B, C, D. We're talking about two diagonals now, and they're intersecting at a, um, point E. So go ahead and sketch in. So we have diagonal BD, diagonal AC, and they're intersecting at point E. So AE is represented by 10x plus 20. CE is represented by negative 4x plus 76. We want to find the length of BD. So that means I want to find this entire length right here. So a couple of things we know. We know, first of all, that because we have a rectangle, which is a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. So that means these parts are congruent. But since this is a rectangle, I also know that the diagonals are all congruent. So that really means all four parts are congruent to each other. So if I can figure out x, and if I can figure out the length of AE, I could add that to the length of CE. And then together, that would have to equal the length of BD. So pretty much what I have to do is find AC, since BD and AC would be equal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just write down the properties here. So since we have a rectangle, we know that that means that the diagonals are congruent. And we also know that the diagonals bisect each other since we had a parallelogram. So a rectangle implies diagonals are congruent. And I'm just going to write it together. Diagonals bisect each other. So that means I can set those two parts equal to each other. So 10x plus 20 equals negative 4x plus 76, and then we're just going to solve it. So we can bring the 4x over, subtract 20 from both sides, so we get 14x equals 56, divide by 14, you get x equals 4. So then from there, we're going to plug in, so AE is going to be 10 times 4 plus 20. So that tells me that AE will be 60. Um, EC must also be 60, but let's just check, because remember we said that they're all equal. So it's going to be negative 4 times 4 plus 76. So EC, if I actually do the math, I should get the same thing, and I do, I get 60. So I have AE equals 60 and EC equals 60, which tells me that the entire diagonal, AC, would have to be 60 plus 60, so we get 120. And then the second part of this, so this is the first part, the second part is, well, since the diagonals are congruent, so we have AC must equal BD, that tells us that BD would have to equal 120, since AC equals 120. And that's your answer. So BD would equal 120. And remember, this property is because we have a rectangle, and in a rectangle, diagonals are congruent. So I don't need to rewrite that, because I already wrote that up top. So that's it for that one. So the next one is going to be very similar. So let's take a look at the next example. So for this one, we have the lengths of diagonals PR and QS of a rectangle are represented by these expressions. Find the length of each diagonal. So let's go ahead and start with our picture. So we have P 
QRS. We have our diagonals. So for these rectangles, you're seeing that a lot of the times you're using the fact that the diagonals are congruent. Um, the fact that you have right angles will come into play like later on with proofs or, you know, if you have some angle type problems. But for these, we're focusing on those diagonals. So I know that the measurements, so this diagonal on um, PR is 3x minus 7. So this right here is 3x minus 7. And then the second one, QS, is going to be 5x minus 19. So it wants you to find the length of each diagonal, which means that we need to know what x is. So since we're talking about the diagonals, we know that they're equal to each other. So in a rectangle, that implies that the diagonals are congruent. So that means we're going to set these equal. So we know that PR must equal QS. So set them equal. So we have 3x minus 7 equals 5x minus 19. And then solve it. So subtract 3x from both sides. Add the 19. So we have 12 equals 2x, divide by 2, so we get 6 equals x, and then it wants us to find, so this again was the first part, second part is to find the length of each diagonal, so PR is going to be 3 times 6 minus 7, we get 11, and then we have QS is 5 times 6 minus 19. And again, you get 11, and you should get equal answers because the diagonals are equal. So that's it for that one. So then the very last one here, we have an example. So we'll go to the last page that we're going to look at. We have this example, and this is where the angles are going to tie into play and maybe some of the other properties. Um, so we have this rectangle. So I know that all of these are right angles. We know that we have our parallelogram properties. Now remember, the rhombus properties don't apply here. It's just the parallelogram properties and quadrilaterals because rectangles are... A separate category. So if we're looking at our picture, first thing it wants us to do is find the measure of angle RWT. So RWT is this angle right here, which has to be 90 degrees if this whole thing's a rectangle. Then it wants us to know what's the measurement of angle 1 plus angle 2. Well, if you look, Angle 1 and angle 2 form a right triangle with this angle R. So here's your right triangle. So that means if this is 90, well, angle 1 and angle 2 have to be complementary because they're the acute angles. So if all three angles add up to 180 and minus 90, you're left with 90 degrees to split between angle 1 and angle 2. So for the next one here, we have the measure of angle 1 equals 3x plus 12. Angle 2 is 2x minus 7. So since we know part B, that angle 1 plus angle 2 has to equal 90, we can set up our relationship or our equation. So it'll be 3x plus 12 plus 2x minus 7 equals 90, since those two angles have to be complementary. The other equation you could set up is this angle plus this angle plus 90 equals 180 since they're all in a triangle. But you might as well just use the fact that they're complementary because the, it makes the math a little bit easier. So then we combine like terms. So 3x plus 2x gives us 5x. 12 minus 7 gives us 5 equals 90. Subtract 5 from both sides. So we have 5x equals 85. Divide by 5 and we get x equals 17.
So the value of x is 17. And then if we want to find the measure of angle 1, we'll take and we'll plug that 17 back in. So when you do that, 3 times 17 plus 12, you'll get 63. So that's kind of using the angles. The next couple letters here are using the sides for diagonals. So if we look at the next one, it says if RT, so that's a diagonal, so RT is equal to 5Y plus 2, and WS, this entire diagonal, is equal to 11Y minus 10. Well, since we're talking about a rectangle, in a rectangle the diagonals are congruent. So the diagonals are congruent because this is a rectangle. So I know that these two must be equal to each other. So 5y plus 2 must equal 11y minus 10. So then we solve it. So bring the 5y over. Add 10 to both sides. So we get 12 equals 6y. So then divide both sides by 6, we get y equals 2. And then from there, substitute in. So for ws, 11 times 2 minus 10. So we'd have 22 minus 10. So we would get 12. This other part here, using that same diagram, now we have SW is 7A minus 2. So we're basically, this is a whole different problem, so disregard the previous SW length of 11Y minus 10. And now it's telling us if SW, so the entire thing, is 7A minus 2, and it tells us that WZ, so this part, is... 4a minus 3, we want to solve for a. So the relationship between this piece, wz, and the entire segment or the entire diagonal is that this right here is half of the entire thing. Um, or you need two of these to get to the entire diagonal. Because remember, in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent and they also bisect each other. So all four of those pieces are equal. So what that means is I need two times WZ, two of those WZs will make up one SW. So that's kind of your equation that you're going to start with. So it'll be 2 times 4A minus 3 equals 7A minus 2. So then just distribute and solve. So we have 8 y, or 8A minus 6 equals 7A minus 2. Let's continue solving that. So subtract 7a, add 6. So we end up with a equaling 4. So then for this next part, to find rz, well, if we go back up to the picture here, rz is actually congruent to let me use a different color here. Um, RZ is congruent to WZ, which is what we just found. So they gave me the expression for WZ, so I can just set those, or just use the expression for WZ. So RZ is actually equal to WZ. So I can just use WZ and plug the 4 into that. So it would be 4, A goes in for 4, minus 3. So it would be 16 minus 3, which will give us 13. And then the last one here tells you that angle 1 is now 61 degrees, and they want us to find the measure of angle RZW. So if we go back up here, this is now going to be 61 degrees, angle 1. They want us to find the measure of RZW, which means this angle right here. 
So the nice thing is I already have this labeled right here with these congruent pieces. So hopefully you see you have this isosceles triangle with two congruent sides. So that tells me if this is 61, this angle is also 61. Then if I want to find x, I'm just going to add these up and subtract them from 180 to get what x is. So we have that isosceles triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtract 61 twice from 180, and we get 58 degrees. And that's because we had an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle means you have two congruent base angles. So that's it for this lesson. So you really just got to see the different types of properties being used. So just remember, you have your quadrilateral, then you have your parallelogram, and then from there, it's either going to be a rectangle or a rhombus. Those do not share properties. So they both are parallelograms, but they have their own unique properties.